the scary discovery that was made a few days ago that the new regulations will make the car much slower than expected sent shockwaves across the F1 world. But the legendary aerodynamicist and Red Bull CTO Adrian Newey opened up in a recent interview saying that there's nothing to worry about. However, will this do anything to change the public's opinion on an already controversial regulation that will change the sport from its core? The 2026 F1 engine regulations may face significant challenges following simulations revealing major issues with the proposed designs. For those who might have missed our previous video where we go in depth with the regulations, they involve substantial changes to Formula One in general, including significant changes to engine specifications and aerodynamics. One key change is the shift to using 100% ethanol instead of fossil fuels presenting a considerable challenge for engine manufacturers to achieve equivalent power and performance without fossil fuels. Additionally, there's a notable adjustment in the distribution of power between combustion and engine recovery systems with a planned 50-50 split. Alongside engine modifications, plans include slight reductions in car size and weight. However, the introduction of active aerodynamics intended to reduce drag on straights and increase downforce in corners has encountered complications and initial simulations using a base car model indicated that cars were virtually undrivable under full power due to spinning even on straights and difficulty maintaining control on curves. The proposed aerodynamic adjustments proved excessively destabilizing, surpassing the current DRS system's impact threefold. Notably, Red Bull's simulations highlighted concerns regarding potential power depletion as nearly half of the power in 2026 cars will derive from batteries and engine recovery systems, a significant departure from current setups. Consequently, Formula One is now tasked with redesigning chassis configurations to accommodate engine limitations, marking a shift in prioritizing chassis adjustments to compensate for reduced engine power. Essentially, Formula One will transition from 90% fossil fuels to zero, which understandably raises concerns about potential power limitations and weaknesses in the energy recovery system. And to address this, efforts are now underway to ensure the cars remain fast on the straights through the implementation of active aerodynamics. However, there is a significant issue arising from simulations suggesting that the 2026 cars may end up slower than Formula 2 cars due to handling conservatism necessitated by aerodynamic imbalances. After the uproar that happened when these simulations became public, understandably many people were really concerned and you'd be right to not expect drivers to like them. I mean, a driver like Verstappen, who you might expect to embrace these current regulations, doesn't even like them. In fact, he's quite critical of the current cars, describing them as heavy and cumbersome, a bit like navigating a boat at times, particularly in slow speed corners. Despite advancements in speed, even the renowned Red Bulls like the RB19 and this year's RB20 haven't won him over. Looking ahead to 2026, however, the situation may get even worse, especially concerning the engine dynamics. A notable concern raised by Adrian Newey is the anticipated scenario at Monaco, where the hybrid deployment will be evenly split between combustion and battery power. Newey suggests that the internal combustion engine will essentially function as a generator for the battery, especially considering the high power demands of the electrical system. This means that even in low speed corners, like in Monaco with the hairpin, the engine will be operating near maximum capacity. Speaking in an interview, Red Bull's chief technical officer admitted it's going to be a very strange scenario to adjust to. It's certainly going to be a strange formula in as much as the engines will be working flat chat as generators just about the whole time, he said. So at the prospect of the engine working hard in at the middle of the hairpin is going to take some getting used to. While the engine regulations have been defined, the chassis regulations that are being molded around them have yet to be fully nailed down as the teams work with the FIA to figure out how best to approach the issue of active aerodynamics. In order not to encounter too large a performance drop, the cars will need active aero to work with the new engine rules and the initial simulation work done on this has 
suggested a more complex front and rear wing approach will be needed in order to ensure car stability. With the cars proving near undrivable under the original plans to only run with active rear aerodynamics, further tweaking is necessary and Newey explained the challenge facing the teams isn't a small one. It is fair to say that the engine regulations were created and pushed through without very much thought to the chassis side of it, he said, and that is now creating large problems in terms of trying to come up with a solution to work with it. But I think the one good thing out of that is that it does promote efficiency, and I think anything that does that and promotes that has to be in line with what I said earlier of trying to use F1 to popularize a trend. Essentially what Newey is trying to say is that the shift towards these regulations is primarily to accommodate manufacturers desires to promote their electric vehicle initiatives. However there's skepticism about whether this direction is the wisest choice in the long run. Furthermore he questions the relevance of F1's developments to road cars highlighting the vast differences in battery construction and techniques. In his view, pursuing these regulations is illogical and in all honesty the question then becomes not if but when this perspective will gain traction, perhaps even as soon as after the 2026 season. The current power unit rules have some glaring flaws. One puzzling aspect is the restriction on using the MG UK at the start. It's counterintuitive since most engines perform better with a narrower working range, yet F1 rules mandate a wider range and if this restriction still exists in the new rules, it should be removed. Until around 2020, manufacturers utilized a method involving regeneration on partial throttle by utilizing the kinetic energy from the MG UK, which then transferred the hybrid system to charge the battery. However, the FIA inexplicably banned this method for the 2020 season and this decision seems arbitrary and goes against efficiency principles. The problem with the 2026 power unit isn't the configuration itself but rather how it's been implemented. The regulations have been excessively simplified, removing crucial components such as expensive sensors which ultimately hampers efficiency and instead of a drastic overhaul, a more gradual approach, incrementally increasing the size of the MG UK and relaxing battery restrictions may well have been wiser. This would allow for adaption to technological advancements and market conditions over a two to five year cycle rather than a sudden and drastic overhaul. Furthermore, catering to Audi's demands was a significant misstep and ultimately F1 should prioritize the sport's integrity and technological advancement over appeasing other engine manufacturers. Honestly, it's now clear that the insistence on the 50-50 power split doesn't come from the FIA or FOM, but rather from the new engine manufacturers. It's clear that neither the teams, the drivers, nor the fans support this direction, and despite the already evident issues, the situation has now escalated to the point where the most advanced internal combustion engines are being repurposed as diesel generators just to charge batteries. These new regulations might even threaten to undermine F1, a sport already filled by numerous controversies. It's a step too far and will undoubtedly alienate the fan base and might cause significant damage to the sport's reputation. While the current specifications may not be perfect, sticking with them does seem preferable to implementing a new design solely to appease Audi, GM and Ford. However, there may be some hope on the horizon. Ironically, the Volkswagen Audi Group, VAG, a major contributor to the current state of F1, could play a pivotal role in its transformation. Their disillusionment with electric vehicles has led them to invest in alternative technologies like e-fuels derived from air and waste, and they anticipate that governments will recognize the limitations of electric infrastructure and embrace alternative solutions. Whether their predictions prove accurate remains to be seen. Regardless, there is a glimmer of hope that their shift in focus could lead to a new engine formula in F1, one that prioritizes performance and sustainability without sacrificing the thrill of racing. However, as long as F1 remains heavily reliant on car manufacturers' funding, substantial change may be hard to achieve. 
Do you think the new engine regulations will undermine and make Formula One worse than it is now? We'd love to know what you think. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.